Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says more than 48 people have been killed in a Russian missile attack on a village in the northeastern region of Kharkiv. BBC News correspondent James Waterhouse is joining us now from Kyiv uh, with more. Uh, that is a, probably a higher number of casualties than we're used to hearing about. What more can you tell us about this strike? It certainly seems that way. I think even by the standards of the almost daily missile and sh uh, attacks and, and shelling that Ukraine goes through, this is the single biggest loss of life we have seen in months. Uh, I think of the Dnipro missile strike at the start of the year on a residential block where more than 40 people were killed. We were expecting the death toll to rise in this instant. Among the, the now 49 known to have been killed are a six-year-old boy. It's in the small village of Urajar in the northeastern Kharkiv region, an area that was once occupied, an area that the Russians used as a sort of main transport hub for its occupied territory, an area that Russia would dearly like to get back. Now, it is not uncommon for, air, for settlements in this location to come under regular attack, but this seems like an especially deadly targeted strike on what we're told was a, a grocery store and a cafe and there's some really distressing pictures being posted by official channels showing bodies covered in dust lying next to rubble with people kneeling over them it looks like an especially desperate situation in a region that's already gone through so much so explain uh, the situation on the ground right now. I mean, uh, presumably it's going to be very, very difficult for journalists such as yourself to get to the region to actually see on the ground what is happening. But what have you, what have you learned? Strangely enough, for Western journalists like ourselves, it's actually the biggest challenge is, is the distance. You know, from here in Kiev, it's... It's around a seven hour journey. The authorities in Ukraine are almost keen to show what is going on. It, it's more, the issues usually arise closer to the front line. Now, Urujar is about 39 kilometers from the front line where there is constant fighting. It's in this area where the Russians have even been trying to launch small counterattacks as Ukraine seems to focus its efforts further south. Um, but it's extraordinary, really, because when you go there, there are people that have decided to stay, that are determined to live their lives. There are thousands choosing to move back there, despite the very real risks. And I think when you see scenes like this, I think this is the realisation of a lot of fears, because Ukrainians live with that background fear that something like this could one day happen close to them. And it seems to be the, the case in the small village of Urajar, with a population of just a few hundred people. Um, so we know that President Zelensky is in Spain uh, today. I imagine on his agenda is continuing what he's been doing uh, for over a year now, uh, asking for more support, more aid, more weapons. Um, what do we expect will be going on? You're exactly right. We are seeing especially turbulent political times in the U.S. And I think for the first time, that is now having concrete consequences for the amount of military aid that Ukraine receives. We saw that short term budget agreement to avoid a shutdown a few days ago. I think what's interesting with this summit in Grenada is that you have most European leaders there. There is an acknowledgement that while, for example, the European Union can give sizable amounts of support, tens of billions of, of dollars worth of military aid, and it can reimburse members for what they give and all the rest of it. But they acknowledge that if the US was to reduce support for Ukraine, that Europe, even as a continent, would not be able to fill that shortfall. And it just shows how the US is the main Western ally here. It is the main military backer because it is able to. And it is also the country which, which provides political cover for Western allies that might be a bit more nervous around the idea of sending tanks, for example, or long range missiles. And I think, you know, these are especially delicate diplomatic times for, for President Zelensky while his country continues to come under an all out attack. All right, James Waterhouse, thank you very much for your reporting.